Now guys, we are going to see the physiology questions which were actually asked in this NEET PG 2022. What were the questions asked from temperature regulation? A patient whose hypothalamic thermostat was reset from A to C. What will happen in stage B compared to A? What is going to happen here in stage B? A very important concept guys. Look very carefully. This is original. A. Now it is moved to C. The new set point. That means temperature is increasing. The set point is increasing. So to increase body heat, what is actually needed? You need to do shivering. Very important. Second, vasoconstriction. Third, pilo erection. Fourth, epinephrine secretion increases. A new set point, temperature is elevated. So what you need to generate heat to elevate the temperature, there should be shivering, vasoconstriction, pilo erection, epinephrine secretion increase. All this happens in B. If you want to reduce that, if you want to reduce that, if you want to bring it back to the original value, what should be done to decrease heat, to dissipate heat, you need to do sweating. You need to do vasodilation. This is not asked in question. This is for understanding. To decrease body heat, there is sweating, vasodilation. To increase heat, shivering, vasoconstriction, piloerection and epinephrine secretion increases. So let's go into the question. Reset from A to C. What will happen in stage B? Definitely shivering will happen. Shivering is a form of, is a form to increase heat. So to go to a new set point, to increase heat, shivering. The answer should be A here, shivering. Next. Blood pressure regulation by baroreceptors is an example of. Important concept guys. Increase in blood pressure will be quickly followed by a reflex decrease in blood pressure. We call this reflex as baroreflex. Increase in blood pressure is going to activate our which group of receptors guys? Baroreceptors. The information now goes to medulla where we have an important center for this reflex nucleus tracta solitarius. This nucleus tractus solitarius is going to inhibit sympathetic nervous system. It is going to activate parasympathetic nervous system. The effect will be decrease in blood pressure. To start with increase in blood pressure, we are ending up with a decrease in blood pressure. There is parasympathetic activation which means heart rate will also decrease. What type of feedback mechanism is this? It's a classical example for negative feedback system. Increase in BP, baroreceptor activation, the information goes to medulla nucleus tracta solitarius, sympathetic inhibition, parasympathetic activation. The overall result is fall in BP, fall in heart rate. So increase is followed by a decrease. It's a classical example for a negative feedback. Now let's go into the question. Blood pressure regulation by baroreceptor is a classical example for negative feedback. The answer is C here. Negative feedback. We have a very important discussion on this. Next, another picture based MCQ. Correct statement regarding cystometrogram. We have segments 1A, 1B and 2. What is this cystometrogram sir? Very important. Cystometrogram. Relationship between volume and pressure in bladder. Consider this volume as 100 ml here. Here it is the 400 ml of urine volume. Now there are three important segments. What is happening in segment 1A sir? Volume starts increasing, bladder is filling, pressure also slightly rises. What is happening in 1B? We are clearly seeing volume is increasing more. Volume is increasing, but pressure is maintained constant. 
even though the volume is filling bladder is getting filled with urine pressure is constant it is because of manifestation of an important law laplace's law in 1b when the volume reaches 400 ml there will be tremendous increase in pressure eventually leading to micturition very important look very carefully segment 1a volume increases pressure increases segment 1b volume is tremendously increasing but pressure is held constant because of laplace law in segment 2 there is tremendous increase in pressure ending as micturition very very important concept this 1b is a manifestation of laplace's law now go to the question 1a is due to residual volume 1b is due to laplace law this is the best answer volume is increasing but pressure is held constant because of operation of laplace law in 1b the answer is option b here the concept we have discussed systematogram sure shot repeat question definitely it will come again next a patient who suffered from stroke presents on the second day with the flailing of limbs the lesion is present in which of the following structure very important guys sudden violent flailing type of muscle contraction involving one large joint sudden contraction sudden violent contraction of one large joint what is this called as sir sudden flailing contraction hemi balismus it's a type of involuntary movement basal ganglia is affected lesion typically in subthalamic nucleus subthalamic nuclear lesion causes sudden violent contraction of one large joint which we call as hemi balismus so hemi balismus lesion is in subthalamic nucleus very important now look into this next question guys the image below shows which of the following types of signaling one cell is going to influence the second cell which is very 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 close to that means it is going to influence that neighboring cell a cell is going to influence its nearby neighboring cell classical example seen in the gastric region our enterochromaffin like cells histamine it releases this histamine will go and influence this nearby cell neighboring cell which is our parietal cell to increase acid secretion a cell influencing its nearby neighboring cell is considered to be paracrine signaling so this is a classical example this is very close to each other so one cell influences a nearby neighboring cell consider this the first cell as ecl cells releases histamine going to influence the nearby parietal cell to release acid so a cell influencing a nearby neighboring cell is paracrine signaling important the answer is a paracrine next a person sleeps on one arm and experiences paresis in the morning but no numbness which of the following is the best example for it we commonly tend to do na forgetting pillow we tend to think elbow as pillow and we try to rest our head in our elbows suddenly when you wake up you will feel very very important paresis what is happening why any idea if you just sleep on your elbow what is going to happen important guys compression pressure effects always remember what is most susceptible here for compression pressure effects large diameter nerve fibers will be affected compression effects pressure effects the most susceptible fibers are large diameter nerve fibers they are our a alpha followed by a beta group of nerve fibers in erlanger and gasser classification we have a alpha a beta they are the largest diameter ones 
they are more susceptible to compression effects. So your head is going to compress the nerve fibers in the elbow. So automatically the answer for the question, A fibers, the largest diameter fibers, A fibers are more susceptible to pressure changes than C fibers. So it should be A alpha, A beta, which are actually more susceptible to compression effects. So the answer for the question is option C. A fibers are more susceptible to pressure changes than C fiber. Again, a repeat question. Remember guys, we have discussed so many questions. You may not get the exact question ditto repeat, but this concepts, this topic may get repeated. So please to revise them just before going into exam, the day before or two days before, try to watch this recall series videos. They will definitely help you a lot. Good luck and best wishes. Thank you so much guys.